nice and friendly and uh, have a good time. There we go. I don't know why I'm talking like that. Forgive me. Ah. But okay, as I wake up and as we get into the game, we uh shall enjoy the load screen together. Together. Ah. Uh, Desert is currently being streamed on the Spanish stream, guys. Uh, we should be able to catch his matches a little bit later on, but this will be the one we catch here to start. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Copa America. It is game number one in the first best of three of the day. No winners, no losers just yet. This determines who goes where in the brackets, but spawning here in the bottom left most corner of the map, it is going to be the blue Zerg player, Eric. Playing for Clan Dolly. Oh, I remember that. Actually, I think we've cast him before. Because I remember we were talking about how he's got the dolly instead of a skateboard. And this dude kind of looks like a villa a little bit. I don't know. Anyways, his opponent, though, in the top right, uh, a little bit closer to my heart, it is going to be a fellow Canadian playing for Complexity Gaming. Give it up for Hendralisk. Okay, so earlier pool coming out of Hendralisk to kick this off. Uh, I mean... We've talked about this before. There's not a lot to say about it. Like, when you go for, like, 8 pulls, 9 pulls, 10 pulls, things like this, obviously it's going to necessitate something closer to a bit of a dedicated attack. The big question that really comes with this, though, isn't the pool timing so much as it is the gas. Uh, will Hendros associate gas with this, or will this just be 6 slowlings to start off early? Uh, because 6 slowlings still have a role in the game to get damage done. Extract your trick for the time being. But, uh... No guess for the time being. Uh, meanwhile for Eric, he did go for the hatchery first. And this is kind of one of those builds that can deal with this. Uh, Hendrix has really got two options at this point. One is to either go for the hatchery. And he will absolutely get a cancel without question. Or he can segment towards the main. One thing we've been seeing players try to do is leave like two or three zerglings on this hatchery. And then try and like dance around the main. But oftentimes that just doesn't work out. As you need, uh, well, just a little bit more firepower, I guess. <laughs> it's weird to call it firepower, but it's, it's lings, right? They got claws, chewing, crunching, slashing. But uh, we'll see just how Hendrix decides to play this out. Now, it looks like Eric knows what's going on. He did scout that with his overlord, so not at all oblivious to the fact that there are a lot of lings streaming across the map. And Hendrilisk, well, he's going to hit this nice timing. Pool's not done. Sp uh, the uh, queen's not going to be out. You can't start a spine crawler anytime soon. And looks like he will just go straight to that hatch. Not a bad idea. Well, let's one of the uh, casters leg out. <laughs> Awkward. Bombs. Uh, his one link does come up to the main. He wants to scout what's going on. He sees no gas, which was kind of a sigh of relief. Uh, the queen is going to be a huge boon in the defense for, for fighting off Angelus, but one of the things is, okay, he does let the hatchery complete. Uh, this will buy him a little bit of time, so it kind of sucks having to let this die, but it's almost the time he needs to get that queen out, the time he needs to get his own lings out. Uh, the fight with this Hendrix, of course, has to be careful. He doesn't, yeah, he'll probably leave like one ling behind to get the killing blow or have them all run away. The broodlings are pretty quick and that's a lot of free damage, but as he disengages from this, um... Mm, Monsieur Bombs still lagging. Uh, Hendrix, it's not like he took a hatchery behind this, right? Like, he's going for speed, and, uh... Bombs. Maybe he doesn't know he's lagging? I don't know. Anyways, uh, lag aside, hopefully it doesn't affect the players, but it absolutely will when it comes to Ling versus Ling fights. I think we've lost bombs though, guys. Oh, no, he's back with us. All right. Well, hopefully, this lag does come down. It is a really big deal. Make no mistake. Like if this is like Marines or tanks, sorry, right, the lag is kind of inconsequential. I mean, lag always is a detriment no matter what the situation may be. But this is a, a particular scenario where the facilitation of lag is almost unacceptable because you're gonna have lag such delicate units, one with speed, one without. But there's a spine car. There's a queen. So Hendrisk might not be in that much trouble. I think what he's intentionally trying to do right now is hide the links and hope Eric moves out. 
Uh, he wants Eric to come across the map. He wants Eric to go fight him in his own base where he'll play defensively. And Hendrix can then just sneak in with his own links. This is a trick I've not, uh, it's not unseen or unheard of before. But when the Overlord comes here to scout, ooh, is he going to see this? Oh my god, he almost doesn't see the links of Hendrilisk. Almost, almost. But with Hendrilisk speed kicking in here in a moment, it's not like it gives him an attack speed bonus, it's just movement speed. So one of the big things it does is, of course, gives Zerglings positional advantages, but also lets them run past Lings, as we see happening right here. So Spinecar not going to be able to snipe off both of these Lings, either of these Lings, really. Three Queens revealed and a Bailing Nest is scouted with gas. So now Hendrilisk knows exactly what he has to prepare for. His opponent getting a couple of Bailings right now, uh, mostly just defensively speaking, but once he's got his own speed, may look to move across the map. Gonna put a spine card down himself with a couple queens on the low ground. I really don't think Hendrilisk should have too much to be afraid of, as he is starting to transition into roaches. Once he's got those roaches out, you can use those to soak the banelings, you can use those to snipe the banelings. Uh, there is always that small awkward period in ZVZ where if you've got enough lings, you can overwhelm your opponent's roaches, but it looks like Eric's trying to play the macro game right now. Uh, really looking to just keep investing drones and drones and drones and... Uh, I'm not sure that'll necessarily pay off for him. Him and Hendrilsk are on similar drone counts, and they are still both droning, but uh, it's the fact that Hendrilsk has his tech path a little more accelerated. The fact that he hasn't invested any gas into Banelings, much less a Baneling Nest, gives him that much extra for like two or three extra roaches. Uh, Eric might be able to hold the initial wave if he scouts this. There is a bit of a classic move we've seen in the past where you just throw down like five spine crawlers. It sounds silly to say, but it is a life-saving move, as expensive as it may be. Uh, so, I'm just still playing a little bit blind. There's no idea this opponent's just droning. I think he was expecting Eric to go for this big speedling attack or some sort uh, with his own link to scout. There's really not that much there. And this might give him the little bit of a comfort zone to either yeah, advance onto layer tech or take that third. So by moving on to layer tech, he'll get roaches, uh, speed for his roaches, which you know, always going to be beneficial and all these other things. Queen's going to try to pick off an Overlord too. I think one of the big things with this is going to take away that vision from Eric, so he won't be able to see if Hendros moves out. Eric himself does move out a little bit to try and snipe these Queens, but that's not going to happen. Uh, so the Overlord does fall, and there's enough Roaches, Queens, and a spine card to keep these links from doing much damage. Again, this is just Zerg links, no Banelings at all. Uh, meanwhile, back at home for Eric. You know, he's got his own Roach Warren coming up. It's almost finished here. He's, both players start the plus on range one upgrades, and looks like we will actually move into that Roach game. Now, uh, you have to consider Hendrilisk, I, I don't know that we can say his 8-pool was the greatest success in the universe. I mean, he did get the hatchery kill, which is nice. That's a bunch of minerals in the hole for Eric, which is why he's so far behind on the resources lost. But as we can see, it really didn't detriment him too hard at this stage of the game. Matching his opponent on upgrades, in fact, can have more roaches than Hendrilisk, uh, most likely if he just keeps investing in them. And Hendrilisk reaches out for that third. Now, this third base can sometimes be straight up what wins you and loses a game. Ooh, a couple things going to run by. Nothing too serious, though. I think a queen can't take care of. Maybe loses a drone in the process, but it's really should be about it. A drone, yeah. Uh, but anyways, the point of this third base is right now, and this is why ZVZ kind of everyone makes a joke. ZVZ more like Z Z Z Z. Uh, a big part of why this ends up being a large factor is because it takes a long time for that income to kick in. Just because you've got a third base and because you've got 10 extra drones or something, there's no immediate comeback. Like, it's going to take you several minutes to have that income uh, equate to, like, five or seven extra roaches. Have that income become the extra upgrades over your opponent. But make no mistake, if Hendrils can maintain his own third and knock down his opponent's third, or vice versa, if Eric can hold his third and kill Hendrilisks, that will get them ahead in this game. Oh, I'm gonna try and snipe off another overlord. I don't know if we can catch that in time. We should be able to float up here to the safe zone. I think, maybe. Ah, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, Roach count though. Looking pretty good for Eric. Someone who, at a small brief moment in this game, did look like he didn't stand a chance just due to the uh, the nature of the opening here. But, oh, is this queen really? Oh, she does get it. Nice snipe. Queen's OP. Uh, two overlords down, but also supply blocks Eric. Doesn't matter, he's got five overlords on the way, but still a nuisance nonetheless. Uh, by the way, again, I will state for the Desro fans, Desro's first match is currently being streamed on the Spanish stream. That's the ES stream for Copa America on Team Liquid if you're looking there. We will... Assuming Desro wins, and I'm gonna assume he is, uh, and Hendros wins the series, catch them in the winner's match, but... Yeah, this is the one we uh, we put a straw poll up for, and this is the one that got voted on. So thus, we have this series to cover. 
Uh, nice as an overseer scout here out of Hindrosk, actually realizing there's nothing really to fear at that third. But he also has, and I gotta give him confidence, this overlord spread is sick. Normally you can't afford to do this. There's a threat of Mutalisks, there's the threat of Hydralisks, but... Yeah. I'm loving the vision Hindrosk has in this game. I'm sure you guys some context. Look at the mini-map. Like half of it, more than half of it's revealed. Then we take a look at uh, Eric's vision, he's got like two spots here. One's the Watchtower and the other's a couple Overlords. I mean, a lot, uh, lot of vision covered by Hendrilus, which is good. Knowledge is power and all these other wonderful things. Uh, it's a bit funny too, we see Hendrilus actually go for the upgrades right now, and so oftentimes we see ZBZ conclude where one player has 2-0 while the other has 2-1, and the player with the 2-0 ends up winning because they just have massively more Roshus, but that may not be the case here. Hendrilus is going to have the upgrade lead, and if he keeps on Roach production like par for par the way he is, he should be the one with more Roaches. Uh, Overseer is going to get sniped off. Well, we actually look at the Roach count. 45 over 41. Uh, big question I guess is going to come into. A, we got the infestation pick coming out for Eric. But B, for Hengelus, he hasn't gone for Bro and he certainly hasn't afforded Tunneling Claws, although he is maxed out now. One of the things we do like seeing about... Uh, or at least I like seeing this matchup, because of course the segmentation of units off, playing Sneaky Bugger, you know, Bro, Tunneling Claw, Roach-like into the, your opponent's base, but... Yeah, the Infestation pick could be really good here for Eric. Uh, Roaches alone are great, they're this brute force unit, but oftentimes... Oh god, the Concave is a little too good for Eric here. There's no way Hingeless walks out of this in a good spot, but still with the Roach numbers heavily in his favor, he's streaming across the map, but the Concave just working too well, too powerfully for Eric. Beating Hendrilisk back and with a superior Roach count in any other scenario should have been an automatic loss. Hendrilisk also has upgrades powering up now. Two, oh, actually two over the one zero might just be that little bit of kick he needs. It's really not that big of a deficit. We see 39 Roaches in play, but keep in mind less than I'd say about half of those are actually on this side of the field. But drones are getting pulled, and the Roach production is not enough for Eric and Hendrilisk with this one decisively strong move. Even if it's segmenting Roaches off to the third to harass at the same time, looks like he uh, is going to win this game. GG is called, and game number one will go to Hendrilisk. Gotta be honest, guys, that didn't, uh, didn't go too well for uh, poor Eric at the end there. Yeah, the concave on his side, but those level 2 upgrades kicking in in the middle of that fight were just perfect. Hengelisk's, uh production was right exactly where it needed to be, and we'll see what map number 2 is. Actually, I know map number 2. It's uh, Catalina coming up next, and the third one will be merry-go-round if we go there. Uh, once again, if you guys are looking for Desro, he is playing out on the Spanish stream versus Darkness in a PvP over there. Um, the winner of that match will go on to fight against the winner of this match. Up into this lobby, ninja my way in here. Alright, we got everyone in the lobby. Eric swapping that blue, and just taking that red. Uh oh, guys, bombs are in the lobby. Watch out! All right, there we go. Countdown has begun as we hop into Catalina for map number two. Uh, once again, this is season three of Copa America. This is group C. 
And, well, it's still the first match of the day. Uh, for those unfamiliar with group stages, I suppose, a quick explanation is there's like a best of three to open. Uh, the, the group to determine who goes to the winner's match, who goes to the loser's match, and everything is pretty straightforward from there, just based off the name <laughs> of the actual match in play. But um, this is neither the winners nor the losers just yet. Spawning here in the bottom right corner of the map. Currently down one at the moment in this ZVZ. We'll see if we can bring it back. It's going to be Dolly's Eric. And his opponents over yonder to the left most side of the map on Catalina is going to be Complexity Gaming's Red Zerg player, Hendralisk. Okay, so... I mean, this is getting uh, pretty interesting. It's worth noting as well. We haven't talked about this a lot, but this is the last season of Copa America uh, for, I guess, the quote-unquote qualifiers. I mean, each of these seasons, one through three, does have a $1,000 prize pool, does have all these games and matches attached to it, but, of course, it all leads to this giant grand final season at the end of the year with, like, a uh, something insane, like a $15,000 prize pool. Or I don't know. All the information's on the Copa America website, of course, if you really want to go look it up. I only know the information very vaguely because, of course, we've been focusing so heavily on these seasons, but... Uh, yeah, sadly, they don't have a point distribution set up like WCS. It would be cool so we could see. I mean, we already know some of the favorites that are probably going to make it, like Major and Cats, the players who finish first and second each season. Then you got the runners-up, the fourth and third places. And, I mean, I think, I think if I'm not mistaken, if Hendrilisk wins this season of Copa America, he should be able to go to Peru for that Grand Finals. I'm not sure if he can finish second or third to have enough points, but it is a pretty tight-knit uh, race between the players who have not been that of Major and Cats, because those are the two that are pretty much guaranteed, as they've, uh, well, Major's won two seasons, and Cats has been second and third place, respectively. But, yeah, I am, uh, I am quite interesting to, interested to see how this all shapes up as we get out of this final season of the Copa America, and this one is coming closer and closer to the end. Remember, each of these group stages leads to a round of eight, at which point we will have, um... Actually, we've got half of that group already determined by the Copa America brackets. If you guys haven't seen that, you can go check that out, of course, on the website, copamerica.starcraft2.com. I'm talking about a bunch of junk, by the way, because they're both playing pretty standard this game, and no one's cheesed out with an early pool, and no one's taking fast gas. But uh, Jim Rising and Ruff with Huck and Jon Snow are the four players already through to the round of eight. So it should be uh, pretty interesting to see who joins them. Again, my favorites for today, personally, are Desiron Hendrilisk, and the final day will probably be Cham, and I want to say Kapoch, maybe. Um, but we'll get a pretty nice spread leading into it, so... Once again, everything is on the availability of the website, copaamerica.starcraft2.com. You can find the brackets, the links, the player profiles, all these actually... They've got a lot of cool stuff set up specifically for Copa America, so we got to give them some props for that. But yeah, those uh, looking for Desro, he is currently being cast on the Spanish stream, so we'll announce that again. As um, If you go to Team Liquid, you can find it. It's the ES-labeled stream up there. Uh, in the meantime, we got those two typical scouting links coming out. I guess my, my assumption is Catalina being the weird design that it is. I mean, it's one thing to be three-player spawn maps, but with the terrain advantages slash disadvantages, uh, the ramps and whatnot, there, there's a lot of different ways this match could get played out. And rather than go and rely on cheese, Hendrilisk decides to play the longer game, and that's fine. Because Hendrilisk uh, is not really known to be a cheesy player just straight up, like... You know, you think cheesy, and you meet it, your mind goes to players who just do cannon rushes all the time, who only do ten pools and nothing else, but... Uh, odd as it is to say, I, I kind of would have liked to have seen Eric open this game with a bit of cheese, pay Hendrilis back a bit. I mean, it's, it's kind of to be expected, that might be specifically why Hendrilis is playing the regular game, but... Uh, yeah, there are some moves in this matchup, in this game, like Temple Bailing's ZBZ are just no fun to deal with, doesn't matter how good of a player you are. Uh, both players denied quite a bit of scouting, Hendrilis didn't quite make it to the main, and uh, Eric also seems to be the same case. So, no one really knows too much about gas times. Actually, Hendrilisk may have seen his opponents... Okay, so I saw one geyser, and he can go back to check the main if he wants to. Uh, he does see the spawning pool jiggling and wiggling right now, like a pool of jello, so he knows there's speed on the way. Uh, because of this, he forgoes his own speed, says, you know what? We can put that 100 gas to better use, and let's get some roaches out soon. So starts this in part of the wall off. Actually, you know, the 100 gas might end up going to, not towards roaches. Well, I mean, obviously towards roaches, but I mean, ranged weapon upgrades instead. As the Evo Chamber comes down here pretty, pretty quick. 
Uh, but here's the problem, right? Like, third base is on the way for Hendrilisk, and this is great, but it's been scanned up by Eric. And if Eric comes across the map with a bunch of speedlings, Hendrilisk doesn't need that much to defend. Uh, seriously, like a spine crawler for the wall, maybe a. Uh, oh, he's actually going to put it out here. Uh, a couple of roachers come out. Again, he has foregone his own speed to get roachers out sooner. So, with his lair finishing up too, he'll have that speed to bounce back and forth between the two bases. Right now, he doesn't have a lot of money to work with, that was the problem, especially, uh, and specifically, not a lot of gas either. So, while he is getting the roaches out, do keep in mind, it's only going to be about three or four. Now, against low amounts of links, that'll be okay. But as we see, Eric's not investing in low amounts of links. In fact, he's getting ready for his own roach transition behind this, going for both ranged weapon upgrades and armor carapace. So, these lings are kind of going to be a bit of a throwaway, do as much damage as possible, but I feel very much that uh, if you keep these alive for the follow-up, these will actually complement the roaches really well. We'll talk about that if it comes down to it, but moving across the map here with that massive amount of lings, Spinecar is repositioning, but uh, the scary reality is there's nothing to defend that third right now, and if he pulls out the roaches and the queens to go up there to defend the third, he leaves a big gaping hole in the wall at the natch one. He can't get back there in time. Speed going to be the benefit here of Eric. So, tries to get on the top of these links. Uh, we'll have to cancel the spine crawler. I don't know if he can save the hatchery, but he should be able to kill the majority of these links. Roaches will win this fight. There's not enough. Uh, ooh. Chance fuse once, chance fuse twice. Not quite enough to keep the hatchery alive, but that hole in the wall. Talked about it a moment ago. There's only one roach here to snipe away at a couple of these links. Might have to drone drill a little bit. We'll get this queen in the main picked off. A bit sad to see. Uh, in the meantime, he's got to leave these roaches out here to plug that gap once again. Tries to take his third, and a lot is going on for Angelus right now, but. Uh, not a lot of drones are actually dying through this. Uh, five are down so far. He still has a drone lead through this. Uh, might get a sixth here? Nope. Not quite. Not able to consolidate his forces over here. Does lose the queens and does lose a couple of these roaches. Back's not quite against the wall. And this is the sad reality of roaches. When there's very few of them, they can't deal with the links so well. When there's a lot of them, they stomp the links. It's not even close. Uh, kind of like what we see here. So with a lot of roaches in play... I really don't like the Hendrils gave those, or sorry, Eric gave those links away to Hendrils. But while this was going on, he still has his own roach production. Don't forget, he did get Carapace over Hendrils, so he'll have the upgrade lead coming into this fight. It'll be 1 1 versus 1 0 in the favor of Eric. He's also got Queens. Queens are actually kind of a big deal. He's going to add that little bit of extra DPS, but more importantly, transfuses. It's like having one extra roach, I guess and how well you transfuse, but uh, as far as this fight goes, Eric has more roaches, he's got better roaches. Angelus has got more roaches on the field though, so his reinforcements poor and he should be able to start beating Eric back. Queens could get involved with the fight, I'm a little shocked, they aren't just sitting back here like this, only transfusing really though should be instead uh, shelling away, but Angelus isn't even going to try. GG is called, losing that throw was a little too painful. Game will go to Eric, and uh, well that was a pretty quick game in terms of roaches, but that will send us to game number three. Uh, it's been a while since I've had to do pure solo casting, so I'm gonna probably have to refill my water about seven or eight times during this cast. I don't have it in me to embrace my camel. Uh, but as I say before, the third map will be merry-go-round. Uh, let's see if I can get an update on the Desra series for you all. Because once again, I do know there are some Desra fans specifically looking for him. Um, that's history. They might be playing with history off. Yeah, they are by the looks of it. So we don't know. Um, either they're still in game one, which I highly doubt is the case, or they're just playing the match history on, which is much, much more likely. Let's see here. Okay, the Spanish stream has. The score at zero zero. So they're still in a pretty epically long game. Uh, as near as I could tell. Still in that first match. So we may actually be able to give you guys some Desra love. Enjoying uh enjoying game number two at this rate. <laughs> oh dear. Um but okay, hopping into the lobby. I'm gonna ninja join my way in here. Boom! What's up, dude? I see you in chat. I also saw your tweet on the Red Bull stream today. You must have felt pretty happy about that. Unless you were at Red Bull and didn't get to see it, in which case you should still be incredibly happy about that. Oh, 
Okay, we're just getting everyone here in the lobby. All the casters hopping on in here too. Ah, oh, Rotate Owls on Twitter letting me know how motivating I can be. Thank you for that support, man. Alright, uh, looks like we're good to go here as soon as the players are. Everyone seems to be in at this point, which is good news. And there's the countdown. Fantastic. Cool. I'm trying to play like bravely default 30 seconds at a time here between games. But uh, yeah, Merry Go Round will be the next map. Again, as you guys can clearly see by the load screen, uh, Hendrosk and Eric, both grandmasters by their own rights, both pretty good at this game. And, uh, well, there could be some question, like, Hendricks possibly could have fought that last game out. Um, there's a big maybe on that, too. But if he did, it would be, like, maybe another 20-minute game where he might just feel like, hey, you know what? All right, I'm too far behind. Let's just close this up with a game three, uh, as they are tied up 1-1 now. Or maybe he just actually felt like he was too far behind. I don't know. Either way, we are in game number three. The winner of this will go on to fight in the winner's match versus the winner of Desro versus Darkness, which once again is going on this epically long game number one for PvP. But spawning here on the leftmost upper side of Merry-Go-Round, it's going to be the Red Zerg player from Complexity playing its Hendralisk. And his opponent in the bottom right, well, more like bottom middle, it is going to be... Pro Dollies, <laughs> Blue Zerg player Eric. I'm sorry, I, just, I love that clan. Like, just the whole idea of a dolly. Anyways, uh, one of the things I think is going to be fairly important uh, in this one is well, first off, no one's gone for poor gas, and we're at the 13 points, so it's probably going to be. Um, and there's so many drones, I mean, so it's probably going to just be a pretty standard opener here. Although, again, this is a map where you could try and get a little bit aggressive, a little bit cheesy. I think spawn locations definitely favor Hendralisk. Uh, I say this only in terms of scouting. Of course, there's no physical advantage from spawning here versus here, but uh, the argument can be made that you'll see your opponents coming uh, way before they see you coming, especially with the scouting with the overlords to start. But Hendralisk goes for a pool, or sorry, not a pool first, but indeed a hatchery opener. So does Eric. So mimicked so far, so good. Again, though, one of the biggest things we're going to be looking for in this game is when that gas timing comes down, because we have to try and mark out just exactly uh, who plans to be the aggressor and who plans to get really aggressive. Now, you might just see a standard gas timing here, and, you know, like Hendros can be do here, uh, before a pool, and that's fine. I wouldn't call this super aggressive just yet, but it really matters how he allocates this. Now, with him going pool for, or sorry, gas before pool instead of pool before gas, says to me probably wants to get that speed out sooner, but we've also seen him forego speed not once but twice, uh, especially in the favor of getting more roaches out quicker and more roaches out sooner. I, I, I can say with pretty much certainty we're not going to see that early third base. I think uh, one of the big scary, scary, and I really want to emphasize scary things, is when you do go for a third base early, it's it's just going to be open and exposed, and it's not fun trying to deal with it. And that's why gasless openings have really fallen out of favor in the matchup, because you, if you open with gasless, it's really good at defending against a player who might all in you, but it's really bad at actually getting units on the field to defend like a third, per se. But We got, uh, who's the salty, salty X in chat saying, go Zerg? Well, dude, you, uh, you won't be disappointed, I guess. <laughs> I guarantee you Zerg's going to win this game. Uh, of course, the question is who. Now, for you fans of both players, Eric and Hengelisk, it's worth noting that this is neither the winner's nor the loser's match if you're just tuning into the cast. So, this determines who goes to the winners and who goes to the losers, but they still have a life to fall back on, each of them at this point. So, even if they lose the series, they're not out of the group and they're not out of Copa America. But uh, the next series, oh, that could decide everything. Anyways, as uh, expected, speed does come out a little bit quicker here for Hendralisk. Uh, only very, very barely though. I mean, like, as we can see, it's not that big of an issue. 
Uh, normally, if his opponent wasn't going for speed, this would be a huge advantage. But he's actually not going to get any ling blocking here, as weird as that is to say. Uh, does hide the bailing nice here at the natural base, though. Kind of an interesting choice. Well, I shouldn't say hide, but it's more like the lings ran past, so he chose to build it down here. Not exactly a sneaky place, as it will get scared up by like an overlord, it will get scared up by anything he sees. Actually, overlord does see it before getting chased off, so... Um, he'll have the tools equipped to play this game. My favorite, my personal favorite ZBZs, of course, are the ones that open with the Zerglings, open with the Banelings, but... Is, as much as I get excited for this, it is very, very likely and possible this is just defensive for both players at the time being. Uh, Eric threw down his Banelings nest entirely responsibly, I feel. like He scouted it, he said, okay, I'm going to need my own Banelings potentially, so get these ready to rock and roll. Hendrix has got a spine crawler coming down here, he wants to play really safe, he wants to play make sure he does not die to some sort of weird uh, amount of aggression here. But the scary, scary, scary thing is on a map like merry go you have to spread creep if you want to actually be able to wall this off, if you want to do the double evo chambers and the roach war. And, uh, neither player able to do that just yet, though, because every bit of larva, every inject counts. The last thing you want to do is not have enough units to fight with. So we do have a couple of bailings uh, morphing in here for Eric. Uh, Hendrix might be able to actually bait a couple of hits if he wants to. Uh, continues to scout instead and actually pulls the circling out of there. Uh, meanwhile, he is pulling up his own lings. Not sure if he's going to go full on speed lane. I mean, he's got the bailing nest, right? So you're going to get some bailings out with this. It's to be expected. The game would just hide it, and that's what I was going to start talking about. Like, it's one of the things where you hide it if you really want to catch your opponent off guard with an all-in, but instead comes across the map, lots of bailings just being made in pure sight, in plain sight. Eric also making some bailings of his own, but he's going to need a lot more than what he has if Hendrix wants to <laughs> if he wants to stop Hendrix. Hendrix perhaps going a little overboard. I almost feel like 15 is too much, but uh, as long as they trade 2 for 2, 2 for 3, that'll be acceptable for both sides of the coin. Uh, as we see the first two bailings will actually pass each other, and these three bailings will trade out for two. Good start for Hengelisk. Of course, without that spine crawler up, he doesn't have a good way to stop this. Oh god, this is gonna get so hectic. Both players just splitting their units all over the place. Bailings getting low across the board, but a good connect on the drones. Oh, the rest of them are pulled back, but beaten back down to the same amount of drones as his opponent now. With a laying advantage, Hendrix continues to ravage his opponent's base. Bailings for Bailings just waiting to go off here. Does cancel and kill every single one of the new Bailings coming in. Eric no longer has anything left to fight with. 20 Zerglings are on the way, but there's no Queens, there's no Bailings, and it all's gonna take us one good Bailing connection. And of Hendrix to just absolutely level the army. Army. Oh, but he gets terrible connections, so I take all of that back. Hendrix finds himself at an advantage, though. 36 drones over 24. He's putting on the aggression. A couple of these bailings are not... Nothing's going to hatch, actually. Kind of sucks in that regard. He's actually... What? I did not even see this coming across the map. I assumed that was Eric building a new spine crawler, but Hendrix brings his own spine crawler across the map. Is actually stuck. Oh, pathfinding. AI, please. Are you serious? Hendrix is going to kill the bailing nest, though. With this going down, that's almost like the nail in the coffin here for poor Eric. Uh, as Hendrix has got more links, more and more and more links coming across the map. Bailings do connect, bailings do explode, and bailings do detonate, but Hendrix has his own spine crawler on his enemy's half of the map. When do you ever see this? Oh, he can even reach the hatchery. What is that range on this thing? Are you serious? Bailing for bailing, still trading out. No one really getting the advantage through those hits. No one getting the sick damage done, but the links in the favor of Hendrix, his, he can put out more money, he's able to inject where his opponent can't, his opponent's going to lose the natural base, and with this, looks like Hendrix will move on to the winner's match, and Eric, well, he's going to put up the fight of his life, but he's not going to win this game, and uh, he'll fall to fight the loser of Desro versus Darkness. Hendrix actually come back, he's going to block out a hatchery, it's not even like his opponent can sneak into the hatchery, and if he loses the fight, moves the spawn card to the top of the map, there you go, there she blows. Uh, but he can win the Zergling fight without the Banelings, he knows this as well. So the Queen's trying to focus right down the Banelings, not a bad choice. They're not really going off on anything, but GG finally called and Hendrix will take the game. Hendrix will take the series 2-1 over Eric.